Okay, so graphing a rational function, this time with more than one vertical asymptote. So here's the second one that we saw was f of x is equal to x minus 1 over x cubed minus 4x. First thing I'm going to look at here is this. And I'm, it doesn't work out, but just want you to know, first thing I do when I see a function like this is I ask myself, is it possible that this thing right here is a factor of this? So I just, I have to do this anyway, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is, I, you know, if you want to, you know, do you want to do x-intercepts first? How do you want to do it? You know what, I think I'm just going to do that test on it. I'm just going to factor this out. So it's the same as x minus 1, isn't it? I'm going to factor out an x here, right? And then I get x squared minus 4. Can you see that this is that? Is that okay? So these are the same things. And then, so this x right here is this one. But this is what? When you look at this, this is what pattern is this? Yeah, this is difference of squares. And that's one of the reasons that we have to really start to recognize those patterns really well is so we so they kind of jump out at us. So difference of squares is this, isn't it? So this times this gives us this back, and this x is that. Well, hopefully now we can see, first off, do they share any factors? The numerator and denominator, do they share a factor? They don't. So that's kind of good news, isn't it? So we can go ahead and take the x-intercept. How do we find the x-intercept? Yeah, set that equal to 0, right? So I'm going to say, take this piece right here, x minus 1 equals 0. x equals what? 1. Put a little square around it. Got that thing checked off my list. I'm just building my list of things I have to have. y-intercept is the next thing we said, isn't it? And what's the y-intercept? f of 0. So f of 0. f of 0 equals 0 minus 1. Uh-oh. Look at this. 0. 0 plus 2. Anybody see what just happened? 0 minus 2. What just happened? No, there's not a hole in the function. It's much worse than that, isn't it? There's a real problem here. What's the problem? It's undefined at x is 0. We have negative 1 over 0. Anything over 0 is undefined, right? It's a domain issue. It's vertical asymptote. Okay, so this is a problem here, isn't it? So there is no y-intercept. This thing never crosses the y-axis, does it? How about this? Now vertical asymptotes. How do we find the vertical asymptotes? In this case, there's more, how many are there? There are three. And how do we do this? We just take this from here, don't we? We take the denominator, and we set that equal to zero. We say x times x plus, plus 2 times x minus 2 equals 0. Well, what are the possibilities? 0, x equals negative 2, or x equals 2, right? Well, we said that there was no y-intercept. That's because it's a, it's, a, it's a vertical asymptote, isn't it? Horizontal asymptote? Say it again. How do we know that? How do we know the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0? That's right. The exponent of the denominator is greater than the exponent of the numerator. So y equals 0. We did all this crap. Gather it all up. Put it together. What are we going to label first? How about vertical asymptotes? 1 at x is 0, 1 at x is negative 2, 1 at x is 2. x equals negative 2, x equals 0, x equals 2. Oh my god, it's a lot, isn't it? Anything you want to label here that we already have? It's going to make it worse. What is it? The x-intercept. The x-intercept is here, isn't it? It's at 0, 1. What does this tell us? 
It's a really weird thing. Intermediate value theorem tells us, oh, good job, Jonathan, thank you. It's one zero. This is intermediate value theorem, isn't it? In this piece right here, does this thing ever cross the x-axis? No, because it would have to cross through zero. It only crosses through zero here, right? So only here. In a way, this is good news because what can we do here? Yeah, take a test value like what? F of negative 3. Here we could take F of negative 1. So Michael, take F of negative, you do F of negative 1. Jason, you do F of negative 3. But what about here? Yeah, one half, and then what? Yeah, so you take one half, you take one and a half. And then over here, take what? F of three. Joel, take F of three. So I had to take these test values. Anybody have any I'm done? What's F of negative three? F of 3 is what? 2 over 15. So all that tells me is this, isn't it? All I care about is it's telling me this, isn't it? If it's a positive, if F of 3 is positive, then this is all positive here, isn't it? And what's F of negative 3? Is that right? It's 4 over 15, so it's positive. That's really important, isn't it? Because if it's positive anywhere over here, it's positive everywhere. Isn't that right? And what about here? Oh, you know what? I, what I should have done is this. I should have taken this point right here, shouldn't I? Well, actually, it, it doesn't matter, does it? Because if it's negative anywhere here, what? It's negative everywhere here, isn't it? Good job. And then here? So it's positive on this side, so it looks like this. All right, we know it crosses to the x-axis here, and then what about on this side? It's negative, right? So this is pretty. This one is pretty complicated, isn't it? This is do, this is doable. This is very doable, isn't it? We can definitely get this done.